Welcome to Unexplained Unsolved Crimes. I like to go through old mysterious crimes that have been unsolved. Some of them were solved later, but I like to see what I can see, what I can find out, see if I have any ideas. Thanks for joining me. This is an update on the tube sock killings. As I mentioned in the last video, I wanted to look at the angle of Billy Ray Ballard Jr., who was the trucker who confessed to the murder of the first couple. Now, the first thing I discovered is that there are a lot of Billy Ray Ballards. That is a very popular name. There really isn't much to find on Billy Ray Ballard. I don't know if it's because his name is so popular or if they're just isn't much out there on him. What we do know is that in 1989, the fingerprint that was found on the vehicle of the first couple was matched to Billy Ray Ballard Jr. And at the time it was matched, he was an inmate in Wyoming and he was there serving time for the abduction, rape, and torture of two women in Wyoming. He later confessed to the murder of Ed Smith and Kim Levine. And so that because of that, he received a life sentence without the possibility of parole. He may still be in the Wyoming prison. He may no longer be alive. It's kind of hard to tell because not much has been updated on this case at all or on Billy Ray Ballard. Another tidbit that I found was that when they found Mike's skull, they never did find his body. So whether his body was separated from his skull or whether scavengers had gotten the bones of the body, I don't know. I, no, nobody will probably ever know unless they find a missing you know, bone somewhere and match it up. It's also worth noting that police had also found an old driver's license that was so faded it was impossible to figure out who it belonged to. They also found an old pair of rubber boots. So figuring out a theory to explain this case is a little difficult because there really aren't any great suspects here and we kind of have to combine the suspects and theories in order to explain the case. The three couples could have all been killed by the same guy, three different guys, any combination. Now, we do know for a fact that Billy Ray Ballard Jr. killed the first couple since he admitted to it. So if all six people were killed by the same person, why wouldn't he confess to the other two couples. We also know that two women had a tube sock tied around their neck in the same fashion. Whether both socks were identical, I don't know. I can't see a picture of the first victim with the tube sock. There's only a picture of the second victim with the tube sock. We also need to ask when the first murder was committed, and both bodies were found, and the woman was found with the tube sock tied around her neck. Was that information known to the public before the next victim was found, or did that information come out after the second victim was found with the tube sock tied around her neck? Now, the only other real suspect that the police had was Mike, and he was the prime suspect until he was found dead. Does that mean that he didn't kill Diana? Does that mean he didn't kill Ruth and Stephen too? We don't know. Anything's possible. It's possible that, you know, him and Diana had a fight. Remember, they did just get back together. He killed Diana, took Crystal to Kmart, drove back to the scene, and then killed himself a mile away. You know, okay, maybe he didn't shoot himself, but he could have slit his wrist. He could have taken some form of drug to overdose. There's a lot of ways people can die. Does that mean he did it? Of course not. Do we know? At this time, we do not. No weapons were found around him. 
So, who knows? Now, the problem with the Mike as the killer theory is the little girl. First off, Mike's boss said that there was no way that Mike would have abandoned his daughter, especially at a Kmart. If Mike were going to kill Diana, he'd have dropped his daughter off at a family member and not some department store. But at the same time, if Mike had dropped his daughter off at the department store, don't you think the little girl would have said it was her daddy that dropped her off at the department store? I'm thinking she would have. I also doubt that it was Mike who killed the first couple. If the murders are connected, I still don't think it would have been Mike. Now, if he killed Diana, had the news of the tube sock already been out, then perhaps he could have tied the tube sock around Diana's neck to make it look like the tube sock killer. But if that were the case, why would the tube sock supposedly have been tied exactly alike? It doesn't really match up. There was also talk back in the day that uh, some people were theorizing that the couple could have been killed by a known serial killer who was active in Washington at that time, known as Gary Ridgway, the Green River Killer. But the MO doesn't match. Could it have been the Green River Killer starting out a different MO? I don't know. Throw people off his trail? I have no idea. But the MO doesn't match any of the known serial killers that were in Washington. So they were also theorizing that some people suspected a well-known drifter from the Northwest named Joseph Henry Burgess, who was also suspected of a double homicide of a young California couple in 2004. Again, nothing matches. So I really don't think it was that person either. So if the tube sock killer wasn't Billy Ray Ballard Jr., Mike Ramier, Joseph Henry Burgess, or Gary Ridgway, then obviously it must be someone else. Someone we have not discovered yet. Maybe this killer just couldn't stop himself from killing couples in remote areas. And it was the beginning of a serial killer who was going to make his M.O the tube sock as a signature, as a means to control women. It is interesting, however, that the killer would kill the parents and then take the little girl to the Kmart where they could have been discovered dropping her off, or the little girl could have possibly some way described something about this person. So this shows that the killer does have some sort of a moral code. Whoever the killer is, It's likely that they either died or were arrested for something else soon after, and that's why the tube sock killing stopped. Perhaps the person is, you know, still out there, and after dropping the little girl off, they could no longer bring themselves to kill anyone else. Nobody knows. That is why the case is still unsolved and remains a mystery today.